Hello, everybody, and welcome to News from the Views. We are on a live feature today, and we are coming to you from St. Joseph Church. I am happy as all could be to be joined by Lupita and Edgar Flores. And we are here in front of this beautiful, beautiful altar dedicated to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Now, the statue will be coming here soon. Yes. Where is it now? It is um, in someone's house. I'm not sure who it, who's got it. Because it's making a little it's making tour. A little tour. It's going from house to house, and then people just come, pray a rosary, and then stays there one night, and then the next day they take it to the next person, and they keep doing the same thing. Wow. And that's in anticipation for Our Lady of Guadalupe. Yes. Her feast, feast day. day yeah. Which is December the 12th, everybody. And... Uh, this was this took a few hours, didn't it, Lupita? Oh yeah, a few hours and a lot of work. <laughs> now this is to represent Mount Tepeyac, Mount right? Tepeyac. Which now you we were just talking to youth group about how one of the who's that? Um, today it's on a one in Marta Quintero's house. Oh, okay. Very good. Tomorrow we'll be in the uh, Renee Tomorrow. and the Pitak Casser. Ah. So everybody's welcome. Come and pray the rosary there. 7 p.m. This is so great. Because basically Our Lady statue goes from house to house to house. And then people just kind of join over and pray a rosary in anticipation. Basically for the novena, right? For the novena, yes. It's a novena. So, it's so cool. It's just kind of like posadas, which we're going to get yes. to in a quick second. But one of the things we were talking about at youth group just a minute ago about is one of the miracles with Our Lady Guadalupe when she showed up in Mexico in 1531 to St. Juan Diego was that um, she she provided these these flowers. Here's Juan Diego statue right over here. And she provided these roses, but isn't it true that they did not grow in Mexico? Correct, because there's they this- They didn't uh, grow at that time. Like, uh, they just grow a certain time of the year, like all the flowers. Yeah. So in December, there's no flowers. Right? Yes. And, and those flowers are the... Uh, and they were fresh yes. in, in Juan Diego's tilma, which Juan Diego had to bring flowers, bring, bring some sort of sign, some sort of miracle to persuade the bishop mm -hmm. that this was actually happening because the bishop did not believe it. And so the bishop said, hey, bring me proof. And he's like, I don't know what to do. And then he went back and Our Lady showed up again. And this time she said, here, here's some roses. Yeah, they're... Uh specific flower that is grown in Spain. It's native to Spain. Ooh, from Spain. It's I didn't a know that. flor de Castilla. Flor like a, Castilla. a rose of Castile, I think that's how I pronounce it. Wow. But that's when Juan Diego uh, brought all these roses to the bishop. That's when he actually believed them because he knew those flowers were not native to Mexico. Wow. And there's no way that they were gonna grow those flowers in Mexico. Yeah. At that time. Isn't that wild? Yeah. I mean that is that is a total miracle. And then and then um, the image of Mary was on the tilt when yeah. he and he didn't know it. Did he? No, when he, he did when he went to unleash all these roses, roses. and there was Mary's knit, and that is the image that is the tilma that is still in Mexico now. Yes. Have you been there? Yes, I've been to the Basilica. Have you really? Yes, I have. And we were talking to you about how like. There's this conveyor belt that you have to oh, get yeah. on because otherwise everybody would be there. But like, no matter when you go, what time of day, what day of the year, you're just packed in there oh, yeah. on this conveyor belt. And then you're like clicking at your, your phone and, and having a quick prayer as you're going underneath. The conveyor belt. <laughs> and it is so and cool. And this, this time of year, it has... I don't know how many millions of visitors. It oh, has it's got to have a ton. And the beautiful yeah. thing about it, it's that we called, like when we're in the need and we're asking Our Lady for a favor, we call them in order to repay for that favor, we do like mandas, that's how we call them in Spanish. It's kind of like a promise that you do to Our Lady. And a lot of people go um, to see her and on, on their knees. On their knees. And the whole uh, patio, and that patio is huge. And they start walking from the entrance on the patio all the way. To how far is that? Uh, I want to say maybe like 10, 12 blocks on your knees. I 
Yeah, and, you and a lot of people it. from other states in Mexico, they actually walk to the Basilica. Wow. Kind of like a pilgrimage. Yeah. It's a whole group or maybe, and along the way, there's like more people joining that are going to see Our Lady. Short distance it might be from walking in Indianapolis to here yeah. to visit, but there is another people that actually go, like saying, from Chicago to here, walking. Yeah. Walk and what I think people don't realize too, is that over there, like, you got this humongous, humongous church, which is the new church. Yes. And that's where the image is now. But there is an older church right there, and then there's another church on the hill, and there's another church over here. There's churches everywhere. Yes. And the one that is up there at the top at the is where Juan Diego, it's dedicated to Juan Diego. The one, yeah, yes. And that one, I love, I love that one. I love that one because I think that is actually built on top of the place the where yes. where she is said to have appeared, and uh, or where that that's where I mean we know she appeared, but that's where they think it probably was. And um, so let's talk about our celebration here because here at Saint Joseph we every year have a beautiful celebration for Our Lady of Guadalupe, and uh, and it's it's a pretty big deal. We got a lot going on. Six. It's December twelfth. Everybody's the feast day. And six o'clock, rosary. Six thirty. We've got the Aztec dance. Oh yeah, let's Aztec dance. It's pretty cool, and there's uh, it's kind of wild. It's because, and I and correct me if I'm wrong. This is why I think it exists. Is because when Mary appeared in Mexico, the Aztec religion was was the religion, and it was a very sadistic sort of religion like they had human sacrifices they had they had all sorts of of really like what we would find very offensive even in our own day today and um and our lady appeared and everybody was happy and everybody danced for joy and because not only was mary there but jesus was there and they knew they almost like instinctively knew that that this was the one they'd been waiting for Yes. So everybody dances. Is that why? Yes, I it's, think that's it's a why. way to honor our uh, Lady of Guadalupe. Yeah, and that's every year. That's uh, we continue with that tradition. Uh, and remember, Lady even of, in the womb of Elizabeth, Saint John the Baptist danced. <laughs> our Lady of Guadalupe was responsible for having about maybe nine million Aztecs convert to Catholicism. This is that a yeah. nine million converts. Yeah. Which is kind of wild because it was not that long before she appeared that the Protestant Reformation started and a few million people left the Catholic Church and followed Martin Luther who had been a, uh, had been a uh, Catholic monk and a few million people left and then Our Lady shows up and brings she like said, three times bring as many. <laughs> I'm bringing them more. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And so then we have the Mass at seven. Yes. yes. At this. seven. Which, uh, at the end of the Mass, we will continue with the uh, Mañanitas to Our Lady. And then after that, we will have... Uh, What's a Mañanita? <laughs> Mañanita, traditionally, is what we sing, like, Happy Birthday. Kind yes. of like a Happy Birthday song. Yeah. And we call them Mañanitas, which is kind of like mornings. <laughs> yes. I come and say good morning. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, and then after the... And then... Uh, oh, by the way, between the Mass and Mañanitas, uh, several people are consecrating themselves or reconsecrating themselves. Like me, I'm reconsecrating myself to Mary. And so at the very end of Mass, we'll have uh, those reconsecrations or consecrations taking place. And then Mañanitas and yeah, then... Consecrated. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and then we will have... Um, what's after that? The uh, Obra. We have an Obra. We have a, yeah, yeah, we have a play. Uh, which they will t be telling the uh, four times when Our Lady appeared to San Juan Diego. And it's going to be pretty cool. I, I hear it's pretty It's cool. a reenactment. It's, reenactment it's going to be awesome. Of the apparitions. And then after all of that... Fiesta! Fiesta and food. <laughs> Fiesta and food downstairs. Yeah, downstairs in the cafeteria. That's going to be a lot of food because oh, yeah. there's going to be a lot of people. Yes. Every year there's a lot Every of people. Every year. And the line for the food was so great. It's so great. Because the food is good. It is so good. It is it's so good. good. It's an important celebration. Our Lady of Guadalupe is the patroness of 
not only of Mexico or Central America, but all well, of the all Americas. All of the Americas, which means all he, this continent. Yeah. Canada, United States, Mexico, Central America, and South America. We were talking at oh, um, Parish Council the other day about how I think we're seeing more and more of the two communities here at this parish becoming one. Yes, and we love that. It's so good. Like, the school is almost half-half, the youth group is half I mean, it's just, there's there's more and more of this, like, we're one family. Yeah, we're breaking that uh, communication barrier. We are. We should never have had it in the first place. Isn't that great? And yeah. and so this is one one reason I think it's important for everybody to come to this yes. celebration. It's because it's, it's not just a... Spanish celebration. It is right. a Our Lady is Mother of Us All celebration, and we're, we're one. one church. We are. We celebrate together. Yes, we do. Now that's on the twelfth, everybody. Be there or be square. <laughs> and uh, but we also want to talk real quick about posadas yes. because posadas are um, the what the, basically the way we celebrate the novena going into Christmas. Yes, the, uh, the preparation. Mm -hmm. We start the uh, posadas start on December 16th, and it's nine posadas. Each posada represents one month of pregnancy of Mary. I didn't Lord know Jesus. that. So that's why there's nine. So nine posadas, nine Whoa. months, and it starts on the 16th. And traditionally, how we uh, do them in Mexico, it's that the posada we all start in the church, and we usually have like two kids dressed as Joseph and Mary. We have a donkey, and we do kind of like a um, pilgrimage to someone's house. Yes. We're gonna be hosting the posada, and along the way, we sing, we pray, and then we start knocking on different doors, and you sing back and forth, um, pretty much reenacting the um, the trip that Mary and Joseph uh, had going from. Um, yeah, okay. but yeah. And from Nazareth to Bethlehem, um, and they couldn't find a place to stay, so that's what we do. We reenact it, and until we get to that place that is hosting us, then they let us in. Um, they usually offer a hot drink and something to eat uh, to all the people that come, and we break uh, piñatas. Now, the piñatas are, um, they have to be very specific. They're in the shape of a star, and it has oh. seven points. Each point huh. represents uh, one of the capital uh, sins. Oh, wow. So when you're breaking the piñata... You're, you're actually sin. striking, striking sin. Striking the sin, yep. yep. Striking sin. Wow. That's, what the main point of that. yes. That's so good. And would you say that the basic theme of the Posadas is... is when Christmas comes, will Jesus find room in your heart? Yes. And because he's knocking on knocking and knocking, and even the scripture says, Behold, Jesus says in the Bible, I, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And here we have Joseph um, asking on behalf of Jesus and Mary, looking for looking a place, for looking for a place. And, and finally, there's the celebration when there is a place. But there's also that kind of like expectation like this like where when is this going to happen when am i going to find someone who opens the door, the door yeah. yeah this year um how we're doing it is that we're having different families host a posada and we would love if some of the um english speaking community would like to join us we still we got, have four days we got the sheet there. sign up sheet sign if up you would sheet. like to host a posada so what does it mean to host what to you? host a posada it means down, downstairs um we pray a rosary uh, and we go around uh, the, the cafeteria yeah, yeah. and um, we pray the rosary and then we do the re reenactment of Joseph and Mary trying to find a place to stay and at the end of it um, we offer um, a drink and some something to eat. So if a, if a candy for kids. If a family is is it a family that would host? Yeah, like the first posada on the 16th, we are hosting it. It's uh, my siblings, their families, um, and us, and we're all it's like five different families together, and we're all gonna pitch in so we can have drink, food, and candy for the kids and. 
It will be downstairs in the cafeteria at 6 p.m. So does that mean that the people then in your family would, like you guys would provide the drinks? The and drinks, the food, the food. But then would you also be we dressed also, up as like Mary uh, or Joe? We'll no. probably have a kid if we can get them to dress up. <laughs> Maria, we, no. we will be able to have a donkey, but... <laughs> Somebody took the sheet. I don't know. Maybe, oh, the sheet went away. Maybe, maybe uh, it's downstairs. Downstairs. Maybe, uh, but, but yeah, we will pray a rosary and we will lead the rosary and everybody will follow along. And it's, That's so it's cool. I remember last year there was one posada. I remember that the weather was really bad. Oh, yeah. It was like nobody it's, was out, but everybody was at the posada. It was so cool because there's nothing that's going to keep us from celebrating um, this place. And we even had people that came from Columbus or from Indianapolis from the Posada. Oh my gosh. And we're like, oh my goodness, the roads are going to be bad. And they're like, eh, we don't care. <laughs> they were there. They were there. It was, it is a happy celebration. And it, it, all these things kind of help us to just get ready. Yes. Spiritually. They help us to be church here and, and then as church, but also individually to to be ready to celebrate these high holy days. Yes. The last Posada. Um, it is done at the church. Um, if you can't make it, uh, if, if you can't come to church, like we, and I mean we, the Hispanic community, we start celebration on the 24th. Um, and we continue on until the 25th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an all nighter. So the other posadas this year are going to be in people's houses? No, they're all going oh, to be all here, here yeah. in the cafeteria at right. 6 p.m. Okay. So everybody's welcome to come at 6 p.m. And you can experience this for the first time if you've never It's so cool, Sorry. you guys. It's so it cool. Is, and it's a pretty cool tradition. I really love it. Are you ready for prayer? Because yeah. You go to the grocery every day? Every posada? So that's, that's the main goal because... Yeah. There's a lot of families, they never see each other yeah. during the year, but a lot of times they're in December on, on the posadas and all that, they, they kind of like start sticking together. And that's when you start telling the young generations what it's going to need to be done. And, and that way they know what to do when they actually grow up and they start doing that again. That's right. And yeah. we need to we need to teach, we need to teach the, younger to generations so they can continue. These traditions are important. Traditions. These traditions are important. And they're also, it's important we celebrate them together. Yes. As a, as a whole parish. Yes. Um, and, and something that I want to point out is that, like uh, today, just for the altar to be put up, there was the the men's group, the Amanita group, uh -huh. and and there was the women's group, and uh, all the other events they're going to be through the through the this whole uh, month is going to be hosted by the lectores, um, by the lecture group, the lecture group, the matrimonial group, everybody. So every group somewhere. basically is yes, is, every is, is is a part of it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I like about it, because today we were like 20 people here, just helping to do this. And uh, the same thing with the other stuff is going gonna, is gonna to go on. And, and it's very important because if you don't pitch in with your little piece of uh, sand, como uh, dicen, tu grano de arena? Yes, your piece of sand. Yeah, I mean, you cannot do all this. Mm. And thanks to Father Mike, because he's been doing great things mm -hmm. for the whole community. It is yeah, true joy. Yes. It is a true joy, and so have you been. And th this is just awesome. And I, December is such a rich time for the whole Catholic Church. And it is a rich time as we celebrate here in Shelbyville. So thank you to both of you and the whole community. Can't wait. I hope to see everybody there at Our Lady Guadalupe, December 12th, and Posadas starting on the 16th. December 16th at 16th. 16. 16. It'll be right after the uh, 5 p.m. Mass. Oh, easy. Yeah. Right after. Just go downstairs. I can't wait. Yeah. It's going to be good. All right, you guys. Thank you for being on News from the Pews. By the way, they have a son who was on News from the Pews. Gosh. Two months, ago. Two, months. Uh, two months ago. Mauricio is still signing autographs from <laughs> that that episode. Aren't you, Mauricio? <laughs> God bless you all. We'll see you later. Thank you.